Seem as though we're back for another week of podcasting and craziness. Mm, crazy. Whatever, crazy. We're so yeah, crazy. crazy. Um, it's so funny. I, As I've been telling people the name of our podcast, several people go, yeah, but what's the name? It's called It Would Seem As Though. <laughs> They're like, no, no, no. But what I it asked was. It Would Seem As Though what? Yeah. It Would Seem As Though You Have a Podcast? <laughs> it Would Seem As Though You're About To Tell Me. No, that's it. No, no, you choke someone up. Because uh, one of my... Uh, acquaintances who is a client at my salon, not my client, but at a salon. Uh, Scott Tom is mm-hmm. a DJ for the oldies radio station. Sure, love that. And he's like, "Hey, can you call in and request song and whatever?" Because they're trying to get more caller involvement. God, excuse me, gross. You're disgusting. God, live, yeah. live to anyway, all of our fans. So he's like, "We're trying to get more caller involvement because you know, for the longest time, everything was just all." computerized and the DJs were not even really there. Yeah. Whatever. And so I was like, yes, I can do that. And he's like, you can plug the salon, you can plug whatever. And I was like, cool, I'll plug my podcast. Hey. And so I was like, hey, this is Vesta. I just got done recording my podcast. It would seem as though. And blah, blah, blah. And I would like to hear this song. And he messaged me back. He goes, well, you never said the name of the podcast. You're all baby. Uh, Baby. So I call, I call back and I said, I just finished recording the podcast, It Would Seem As Though, which I do with my beautiful daughter, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, we got a little free advertisement on How the radio very amongst the old people who are like, what's a podcast? I know. Who are these people? Do you cast, is it like fishing? Uh-huh. But you, oh, and they're eating Tide Pods? That's what I heard the kids are doing. Oh, those kids. Oh, those, those kids. I don't know Tide where pods. they are listening know. to this. I don't know. And the other day, <clears throat> I got to work and I had a package at my work. And I never get packages at work unless they're business related. Yeah. But clearly this was not. And it was from our good fr- Judy, who we adore. Our good Judy. Uh... Miss Jenny Quail. J- Miss Jenny Quail. Jenny Quail. Jenny Quail. <laughs> uh, right, as she's also known, Jenny Quail. <laughs> and I open it up, there's a cute little card that says, on the outside of the envelope, it says, ladies. And the front of the card says, fries before guys. Hey, about it. About it. And then it says, to the hosts of It Would Seem As Though, I thought you ladies could use a little swag. Couldn't so be. much love to you, Jenny Lane. Hashtag tangents are topics. And so she sent us these uh, special order pens mm-hmm. and they're the fancy kind with the little you can use them on your computer or on, you know, on your screen because they're a stylus as a well a stylus there we are I'm old I forget words uh, but yeah they also have the hashtag tangents or topics on them so thank you Janny Lane we love you yeah Love you so much. You're so and awesome. I've already like shown everyone and given a couple away, but just a couple. Because... I know it's like I I know that's what they're for, but... Is it, but it's like it's so hard because they're cute and my friend gave them to us, right? And, exactly, you know, and we we heart her. I know. Yeah. Well, last week I feel like because my mother in law um, emails me every week to update me about the podcast. <laughs> And how she loves us. Yes. Um, so I always get that email, and she... I mean, last week was kind of a heavy topic, right? It was about near-death experiences. Oh, yeah, yeah. And one thing that... Times we, we should have died. Right, right. And she said um, it was a heavy topic, and every time like we were telling a story, she'd be all, no, girl, don't do that. Don't go there, girl. <laughs> like, she was yelling at us. Like, she was watching a scary movie. Yes, exactly. Don't go in there! Yeah, turn on the lights. Yeah, so I think that's very cute. And then Heather Rachel emailed us. Put a padlock on your jeans. <laughs> No, um, but no. also, Listen. Heather, Heather Rachel emailed us, and she just confirmed my story <laughs> of Psycho and being at that party. And yes, yes, yeah, she did. it was. Uh, she what? said, I was planning on emailing, I was going to mention that story, <laughs> that, that specific was. story. The night Rachel almost died, in quotations. Yeah. So that's apparently the name of the story, <laughs> the night Rachel almost died. That boy was garbage. Clearly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think girl. we got, all got that from the story that that boy was garbage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we didn't last much longer after that night. Ha ha. I would hope not. Yeah. I, I remember them saying, we don't want to be liable for what happens. And you said, 
Well, what's gonna happen? <laughs> Rachel, you're leaving. Uh-huh. That sounds very bossy like you. Yeah, girl. That. I also forgot about your Jack in the Box now Jack in the Box night. Ooh. Mm-hmm. But now I remember you telling us like the next day. Yeah. Even I was traumatized. Same. Yeah. Same yeah. girl. I was traumatized. I was in a whole nother state. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't scary. even you know, like you were just down the road from it. I was in a whole nother state. Yeah. Ugh. Uh not death related, but I remember but remember when you, Sebastian, and I went to breakfast. Ugh. He who must not be named was there too. That was my ex-boyfriend. But he's irrelevant. Yeah. Oh, Sebastian. Hi, Sebastian. And I were walking next to each other. And he's 7'3". God, I'm looking a little bit like a hobbit. Yeah. A solid 5'1". Honestly, seeing them together was really cute because Sebastian's genuinely... Is seven foot three, yeah. and Rachel. And you is... know we exaggerate about everything. This is the actual. No. that's a number. No. That's a real fact. He is seven foot three. Yes, my little best. And beautiful, beautiful. He's also mostly gray now, which I'm like, oh, like... okay. So your tan skin and your blue eyes and your gray hair, like, shut uh, the fuck up. So now he's even uglier. I know. So seven foot three, and Poor Rachel's Sebastian. five foot one. So he's over two feet taller than her. But you which know is that obscene. also makes me think of Janny and her husband. Because mm-hmm. Janny's, what, about five foot tall? Yeah. She, she a little lady. <clears throat> and Byron is, what, eight foot six? About roughly. I he's mean... a couple inches taller than he's, me. <laughs> I think that he's, like, six... He's six, very nine? tall. Yeah. Something like... I don't know. It's been a long time since I've seen him or stood next to him. Felt very, very, very short. I know. It's always interesting. I used to not like being around taller people, like, uh, regularly, because it made me feel... Because I'm tall, and taller than a lot of people, yeah. that it made me always feel like I felt... How do I... What do I do with my body? I'm a little person now. <laughs> I don't know what to Look do. Me, I'm tiny. I know, right? Deet. But then, I mean, that's... There's been many situations, like playing sports or, like... Sebastian's entire family speaking of Sebastian going to a family reunion and being like one of the shortest people there and being like what is happening like look at me I'm tiny I can Uh practically walk under the table girl I wore heels like every day that week because I was like bitch I'll be 6'6 because I'm short I'm dragging out the platform (laughs) hell yeah hell yeah loved it Uh, you know when I first started going out to the clubs and I'm not short I mean I'm kind of average height I was 5'9 I'm now 5'9 you're right you are average wow (laughs) But the first time I was at one of the clubs and a couple of drag queens came up to talk to me because they were campaigning for uh, Empress. Mm-hmm. And was like, you need to come vote, blah, 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 and whatever. I felt so incredibly short. Did you? Because I was standing next to two queens, one who's no longer with us, Dora Jar, and one who is Champagne. Dora, I think barefoot was six four. Jesus. And then you put her in heels. Mm-hmm. And Champagne is also very tall. And then you put her in heels mm-hmm. and big hair. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I felt like a hobbit. I'm a I was little. Like, I'm teens. I'm a little person. <laughs> well, height wise. Help me. <clears throat> yeah, I got that. And so, speaking of drag queens, I thought it would be fun. Because I've been, you know, you know me, I love the drag. I watch the, yeah, all yeah, the drag yeah. races. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And was, I was talking to someone the other day and they're like, well, so which drag race are you watching? I'm like, it'd be easier to ask which one I'm not watching because I watch them all. Yeah. So I watch one? every episode of every franchise in every country, including the stupid secret celebrity drag race. Yeah. Which, in case you didn't get that from the, it's stupid. It's stupid. It's kind of stupid. There's some cute folks on it, but I'm like... The whole idea is they come in and drag and no one knows who yeah. they are. Yeah, yeah. And then they revealed on stage if they lose or whatever. I'm like, mm, it's dumb. Anyway, uh, because you grew up around it, mm-hmm. I figure you'll know all these terms, but yeah. our listeners might not. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start easy. <clears throat> I love this. Um, what may, it's, this makes me think because every time I'm around like predominantly queer people for the first time or I've met like a new group of people or whatever... And, like, speaking to them or getting to know them, they're like, oh, like, you know some shit. And I was like, I was raised by drag queens. Like, what do you mean? Like, right. when I, so my, my example is when I, if you watch Drag Race, um, these two people in the story, you'll know who they are. But when I, the very first time I modeled with Willem and Detox, they were like, who are you? And how do you know, like, all of, like, the tea we're spilling and all the shit we're saying? And I was like, because I was raised by drag queens. All, oh, okay. So she fancy. And I said, mm-hmm. Yes, girl. She fancy. She fancy. Yep. <laughs> All right, so I like to say we're going to start easy. Okay. Mug. Mug is your face. Or, it could, okay, so you could, like, your mug is your face. You could beat your mug, meaning you're putting makeup on. But you could also, it could be, like, a verb. You could mug somebody, meaning, like, right. you staring him down, right? You giving him that. And that's mm. a mean mug. Mm-hmm, mean mugging, yep. Yeah. Now, mean mugging I learned from 
Foster Boys. Well, but because people, I had never heard mean mugging. Right. People just say, oh, they mug me, which right. just means like, yeah. Right. Well, it's also like from Willem, mm-hmm. I learned the term mob. Uh huh. Which steal means steal to steal. steal. Right. I'm gonna mop it. Mm-hmm. Ooh, girl, I went through, I mopped a few things on my way out the door. Oh, you, you yep. cleaned up, did mm-hmm. you? Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> I took some things you no longer needed, <laughs> whether you knew you needed them or not. Well, so then I don't have, obviously, you threw it in there. Beat your mug is yep. to paint your face. Yeah. Or paint your mug. And the queen will say, I gotta go, I gotta go paint my mug. Mm-hmm. And I know she's not going to the ceramic store right. to, you know, paint go, a coffee. Exactly. Cup. But it's funny too, because I have said regularly, because I wear full face makeup. Oh, I just beat my mug. And people, if people don't know, they're like, what does that mean? And predominantly where I work, right, is young white people. And so they're like, you did what? Like, I'm so, are you okay? Wait, is there abuse happening? (laughs) You beat somebody? No. Girl, let them try it. Well, then what's a full beat? A full beat. So a full beat, to me, I think would be when you're like, done up, ready to go, like, completely, right? Full face, right. full, yeah, ready, yeah, your yeah, full yeah. beat. Not just, like, oh, I, I threw on some shit to run to the store real quick. This right. is, like, a full beat to go out. Right. Mm-hmm. Here's another way, and this one is an old one, so you might not know this Okay. One. Uh, a geesh, or a full geesh. I'm in full geesh. Full geesh is, like, similar, though, isn't it? Like, yeah. you're in, like, full drag, you're, like, full, yeah. done up, ready to go. You are done go. up from head mm-hmm. to toe. Yeah, full geesh. I haven't heard that only but from you. Okay. Well, it's funny because I used to hear it when I was young. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of fell out of favor. Okay. And then one day when I was watching Drag Race season... Season six. (laughs) Okay. And um, one of the queens who came on was talking about that was too. Girl, she up in full geesh. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, girl, I haven't heard that in a hundred years. That's cute. Years. I'm going to start yeah. using it again. Okay, here's one I, you might not know. Because mm-hmm. this is a more obscure one. Clock the spook. Clock the spook. I don't know because... And it sounds racist, but because it is Because I, I want to say something, because clocking somebody, right, is, like, <clears throat> identifying that they are, like... It's, like, identifying that's a drag queen. You're going to yes. clock somebody. Um, and that's exactly what it is. Okay, because also, I've heard the term to spook somebody, which means the same thing as clocking somebody. Yes. Okay, so that... so But clock the spook just means, like, oh, you're a drag queen, but I know you're a man. Right? right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, exactly. Okay. You see mm-hmm. somebody, some gorgeous girl, and you're like, but you're a man, though. Do you remember back in the 90s? She's like, a man, Maury. Uh-huh, that's a man, Maury. That's what I think of, like, clocking yes, the spook. Absolutely. Even though that show, Jesus fucking Christ. All right, all right, all right. What about garage doors? Ooh, your eyelids? Yeah. Okay, yep. I don't also, I don't think I've ever used that for eyelids. Well, and garage doors is when it's solid color. Solid color from... Let me tell lash you something. Lash line to eyebrow. Let me tell you something. You should, Which, by the way, no one should ever. You do. should literally never paint from lash line to eyebrow unless you're in Kabuki theater. Okay. Sure. You uh, look up. There's tutorials. There's pictures. Girl, no makeup artist is painting one color from lash line to eyebrow. So this one must tell you: don't do it. Okay. Right. Do anything else? Right. No, it's bad. Yeah. Uh, if somebody told you they peed on the stage, what does it mean? Ooh, girl, they just tore it up. They just performed the shit out of it. They yeah. were amazing. They killed it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They marked their territory they, yeah. by being so good that they nobody should follow them. Mm-hmm. Right. You're good. Cliffhangers. Oh, ew, girl. This is when you're wearing... <laughs> <laughs> when typically when drag queens are wearing shoes that are too small and they're open toe and their toes are hanging over the front. Right. Yes. Here we go. I, and we used to always joke with certain queens who I will not mention mm-hmm. that you could hear their nails clickety clacking <laughs> on one because they were so far over the end of the You know the what? Ship. To be fair, let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you something. Oh, to girl, be fair, tell me. To be fair, back in the day, back when the dinosaurs were on the earth and you started doing drag, yes. they didn't make shoes. <laughs> they didn't make shoes, like women's shoes for men that in, in many varieties. And so sometimes women, and if you, they were cost a penny, bitch. So some people had to shove their foot into some something and make it work i'm not saying it was right i'm just saying it i understand the it, struggle. Was ne- it was a necessity yeah girl i well, could see that i identify it used that. to be that really i mean i don't know before this mm-hmm. but like back in the 80s yeah if you wanted a heel that was even semi-attractive mm-hmm. you had to order them special mm-hmm. order them and if you wanted the clear acrylic pleasers which all the queens wear you got those from like fredericks of hollywood because mm-hmm. they would go up to a size 15 wow okay yeah. Now, of course, you can kind of get them anywhere. anywhere. And there are websites specifically for drag queens. Yep. And there are websites just for girls with big feet. Yeah. Because, you know, some of us I, are just girls with big feet. Let me tell you, I love it. I love that there's websites for, like, tall girls now. Like, girls that are genuinely just, like, freakishly yes. fucking tall. Um, hey. 
Because sometimes it's, and it's easier now. Things are just much more accessible. And I think that's the point. But I mean, imagine being a drag queen. I mean, you were in this time, but like nowadays, how with drag being so popular in this economy, in this economy there's one place where you can buy shoes. Like right. that is not inclusive. <laughs> no, I mean, it was like pay less shoes, which doesn't exist anymore, which is was, weird, was an option okay. um, up to like a size 12, but sometimes were they, 13. Were they all like kitten heel, sometimes, like church lady but they were shoes. ugly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you can only get them at certain Payless shoes. Okay. And ordinarily, <clears throat> and for whatever reason, usually the ones in the black neighborhoods. I guess because huh. they thought black women had bigger feet. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting. Don't know. Okay. Interesting. Um, here's one that actually I just learned uh, right. a little while ago. Park and Bark. I... Um, the only thing I can think is like, I, like sitting down and talking shit. No, well, then that makes sense. Right. No, it's when you are one of those queens who just kind of stands in one spot and p- performs, you know, Celine oh. Dion style, you know, I lots see. of drama, lots yeah, of yeah, yeah. but no splits, no, no. death yeah. drops, no, as my dear friend Poison Waters says, no clam slams. Let me tell you, I think, I love it. I love that all these queens are like acrobatic or whatever. Um... But I think it's tiring and tiring to watch queens, especially in like a newer generation of queen, drop into a death drop or do a split or do like, it's over. Especially and, uh, if you do many. Yeah, girl. In, and, a, in an act. Who needs it? Not everyone needs to do it, girl. Find your thing. Don't fucking death drop every five seconds. It is so I tiring. just finished watching the new season of Down Under. Mm-hmm. Drag Race Down Under. And... When two of the girls did their, you know, lip sync for your life, it was just an acrobatic show. It's so boring. And it's like, I I get it, but mm-hmm. too much. Yeah. I want to see your face. Yes. I, I want to see that you know the words. Mm-hmm. I want to see you know what those words mean. I want to see the emoting in your face. But also... Because you should be also an actress. Yes. So I want to know, if you're doing a sad song and you're standing there... You know, Smiling. Like, oh my God, I forgot about this. I just rewatched part of season... No, did I watch all of season eight? I think you just rewatched all of season eight. Just because I love Bob the Drag Queen. Sure. And I forgot that in one of the lip syncs, when Thorgy Thor and... um, Who knows? Blanked on her name. Some other bitch. When they did, and I'm telling you I'm not going. Mm -hmm. I was fine up until the end when Thorgy decided to throw in a cartwheel. Yeah, I don't... I am telling you I'm not going is a devastating, heartbreaking song about lost love, not about... I'm joining the circus. Yeah. See, girl, that's it. And Chi-chi. like Devane. Oh, yeah. Who's the other one. See, that's the thing. I I just don't and like like the face and emoting. Yes, I think that's important. I also think your movements and your body language should also go along with what you're fucking singing. Celine, you know, Celine Dion's not singing "My Heart Will Go On" and doing a fucking death drop. Do you know what I mean? She's not like She's cartwheeling. Not? No, <laughs> you know what I mean. I though? swear, I've seen Celine do a cartwheel and a death drop while she was doing "My Heart Will Go On." I don't think you have. Maybe that was Brooklyn Heights. Maybe, but yeah, I think that doing I, Celine Dion. I think maybe cool back in the day when it first started. Like, oh my god, you can do a death drop. But now I'm like, ugh, go home. Like, immediately disqualified. <laughs> Get the fuck I'm out. I'm sorry. Both of your feet need to remain on the stage. I know. All time. My good friend, Epiphany, mm-hmm. uh, Epiphany Mattel, who I adore. Sure. Adore, adore, adore. Um, she used to say when she would do my shows, because this is when the stunts were really just starting. Okay. And we had a few queens who would do a cartwheel or a backflip or they would okay. do this one move that made me want to throw up where they would spin their head really fast so the you know, little hairography. Yeah. But spinning their head really, really fast in circles. I'm like, how do you not vomit mm-hmm. or get a really nasty headache? But she would say to me, I'm not a trained pony. <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing tricks. No. I am performing a song. Yeah. And sometimes when the people were not into it, when they weren't paying attention, they weren't whatever, she would pull a chair up on stage and sit down because she's like, I'm not working that hard for 10 dimes. Because you would hand me a dollar? Mm-hmm. And that is 10 dimes, girl. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I'm not going to work myself to a fren- frenzy for that. Hell no. Hell no. All right. So I have one more thing, and this is actually just a, a superstition thing. Okay, great. Uh, what, what thing do you never put on your makeup table? Because it's bad luck in the theater. Oh. I don't know. Your shoes. Oh. You never put your shoes on the makeup table because it's bad luck. 
Interesting. I don't know why. I don't know how that started. First of all, I would never think about putting my fucking shoes on my makeup table. So I don't know what well, dirty bitches no, you your, worked with. Well, you saw, you've seen the dressing rooms yeah. that most of us, you know, had yeah. to work in. It's like, it was a dungeon. Well, I even remember like when I was very young and going to see you perform at random places, you know, mm-hmm. and going into like all dressing rooms were usually like, like a closet bitch or like a hallway. The one time I do remember it being like expansive, it's because it was just like part of the gym, but that was when the OSU show. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, because it was like a whole room. I mean, it wasn't great for like getting ready. No. So, and you know me, I always showed up at my gigs ready, but I, the best one I ever had was when I worked at Dante's Inferno downtown. Oh, right. Uh, because they would have, they had a vaudeville kind of night. Yeah. Don't they have an entire green room? Yes. Right. Girl, and there was a bar in there and a pool table and video games and tables and chairs. And I was like, what? Couches? See, this is why I can... Because the entire show mm-hmm. would be in there because they didn't want any of them out mingling with the guests. Yeah, Once huh. you did your gig, sure. you know, you were welcome to uh, go mingle. Yeah. But until such time, they wanted you in the green room. But I was like, I could hang out in the green room the entire... Mm. I don't want to go mingle with these uh-uh. folks. I'm going to go hang out Mm-mm. in the green room. I'm going to play no. some pool. <clears throat> I'm going to do it. Well, I play pool. Yeah. You know how I play yep. pool. Oh, I remember. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't... This is why I can be an entertainer. I'd be like, oh, this is cush back here. I'm just going to lay down for a little right. bit. Wake me up. I well, might it perform. Was, it was fun because in that green room on any given night, there yeah. was like... A burlesque dancer, okay. a magician, a comedian, <laughs> fucking you know, nerds, drag queens, whatever. And one of the magicians, he was just so nice. He came and sat at our table, and it was you know those high high bar tables, mm. and did close up magic. Okay. Now I am one of those weirdos. I love magic. Yeah. I love it. I believe it's real. Okay. I know it's not. Yeah. Okay. But snaps. I'm watching you do magic, going, uh, what? How? Witchcraft Who, and what? Wizard dream. I mean, if you're pulling the quarter out of the ear, woof. No, but this guy was doing stuff that I was like, "This doesn't even make sense with the laws of <laughs> physics and whatnot." Mm-hmm. But that was my favorite uh, of all the yeah. places I ever worked. Green, you know, a place, dressing room, green room, whatever you want to call it. Okay, one more thing. Okay, what uh, is it? Bad luck to wear. Oh no, I don't know if I know any of this. Okay, I will narrow it down. Okay. Feathers. What kind of feathers do you not wear? I mean, I don't wear any of them. I don't like girl, them. I don't like them. No. I'm just going to say peacock. That is correct. Okay, I win. Peacock feathers are bad luck to wear. Just like in theater in general? I don't know in theater in or general, in but in drag specifically. Why? And I don't know why. Okay. But I know this always <laughs> If you were making a showgirl costume, you did not make it out of peacock feathers. Interesting. I wonder- Pheasant... Ostrich, yeah, yeah, whatever. But peacock is a no-no. But see, that's how superstition. Sorry, like, don't do it. I can't tell I you why, why, but know, don't right? do it. Don't do this thing because I don't like it, and people have said it's bad, and I don't know why it's bad. And but so don't now do it's it. bad. Mm-hmm. Oh no, girl, don't do it. Don't do it, girl. <laughs> exactly. Um, on the topic of drag queens, Great. I just saw that on Hulu, mm-hmm. uh, they're having a. Huluween mm-hmm, drag day. extravaganza. Okay, nice. Yeah, it's a whole I, drag show. I love it. Okay. With a bunch of drag uh, icons. Okay. Uh, Lady Bunny is on it. What? Jackie Beat. <laughs> okay. Oh, love Jackie. Um, Ginger Minj. Mm-hmm. Uh, Monet Exchange. Mo Hart. Oh, I did see this. Several other people. And there's also some of the folks from Dragula, Thank like uh, yeah. Landon Sider. Okay, yeah. And a couple Winner. other people. Yeah. Because they don't have it right in front of me. But I just, Rude. I was like, Sweet. Nah, that's really cool. You know, Hulu. Hulu. Also owned by Disney. <clears throat> I, I knew so that. So go Disney. Snaps oh, for you, Danae. And you know, last week when we were talking about Disney and how they're upsetting the white people with, yeah. you know, casting people of color and... Yeah. <laughs> in the roles that should just go to the white people because mm-hmm. they've always played them. Uh, well, there's another one. What? The role in the new... Uh, it's not even made yet. The new Peter Pan... The role of Tinkerbell. No, don't say it. Is going to be played. No, don't do it. By a black dress. Oh, no. Yeah, and I, I'm sorry, I blank on her name. Wait, you're going to tell me that fairies are black now? You're going to tell me that believe fairies this. are black? Mermaids I mean, first, now fairies? I know. I know it's hard to believe. It's hard to understand. It's hard to grasp. Because fairies... Next, you're going to tell me that Jesus wasn't white. <gasps> you know? I would I don't never, think I can handle it today. I would never tell you In that this because... economy, bitch. <laughs> My Jesus uh, loves guns and lives in America. America. 
No, it's the young lady mm-hmm. uh, from the show Blackish. Uh, oh. Yara Shahidi. Okay. Is going to play Tinkerbell. Mm-hmm. Is she the daughter of Blackish? Yeah, she's the older daughter. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I was like, snaps for her. I know, love, 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 love. But again, mad white people. I don't Wah. give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Do you know what? When I sometimes, I know we should probably take a break soon. But sometimes when I talk to people about like what I study in school or like the research project I'm a part of or whatever, and it's all about diversity and inclusivity and whatever. Because of where I work, a lot of people are like, oh, and you can tell it's kind of like. Hmm, Because I mentioned how it has to do with, like, diversity and critical race theory and, you know, inclusivity. And people are like, oh. But when they hear critical race theory, they're like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. Like, their brain just goes blank. Oh, yeah. And they're like, oh, so you're a racist white woman against white people. I get it. You know, they get that weird mentality how, like, you're just teaching my children to hate themselves because they're white. And I'm like, okay. Well. Do your children suck? Then right. maybe they should hate maybe themselves. If, they, if your children are horrible <laughs> and should hate themselves, right. absolutely, I will teach them that. Yep. You know, it's like, I'm sorry, little Jimmy. Mm-hmm. But you you're suck. an asshole. You suck as a human being. Oh, God. You know. Go tell your daddy I said so. You know? Yeah. That's how I feel. But yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's like, I, what I don't understand is, well, first of all, how anyone's dumb enough to think that uh, racism could be in any way against white people. Because racism... Is uh, as all isn't just about race. It also has to do with power because mm-hmm. it's and prejudice it, plus power equals racism. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, since white folks have always had the power, mm-hmm. yeah, there's no such thing as reverse racism. Well, there's bias. Mm-hmm. There's bigotry. Yep. But reverse racism, not a thing. And I'm going to say something. Just because you live in a town where there happens to be, I don't know, black people in charge of things, like the mayor or the city board or whatever, still doesn't mean that reverse racism exists. Because in the whole of the United States, it's like white people who run shit. And white men. And so if you want to get mad at someone, get mad at them. Go fuck yourself. Like, don't get mad at me, right? I'm just telling you what's up. You can, but you what can, if I want to be mad at you? You can. That's fine. I mean, people are mad at me often for reasons that <laughs> don't. Why are you so mad? Why are you impressed? But yeah, anyway, so people are really cool. That's just in case you're wondering. People are super (laughs) neat. The people are cool. I I haven't found that. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I do want to share one other thing just because it made me laugh. Okay. I saw this today. Mm -hmm. Um, When I was looking at the Hulu Ween Drag Extravaganza. Uh Are you ready? I'm not. How do you feel about candy corn? Candy corn, like the actual candy? It's fine. I don't feel one way or the other. Okay. I am a candy corn hater. Oh, okay. I think candy corn's disgusting. Right. Because it's a little thing of just sugar. Straight it's just sugar. sugar. That's how There's I feel really about no... peeps, too, girl. Peeps, yeah, they're disgusting. Disgusting, yeah. Disgusting. Well, I read this little thing, this tagline for a new product says, if you hate candy corn, shove it up your ass. It's a new candy corn butt plug. <laughs> <laughs> just in time for oh Halloween. Oh my God, I love it. Just get real festive for the holidays. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Candy shove it up your ass. Candy. That is so funny to me. Yeah. No, I and it comes in multiple sizes. Hold on, I gotta call the police to know. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, I'm sorry, but I <laughs> my ears are being assaulted. I'm violated. With this sex talk of a butt plug. Oh yeah. my god. I don't know if I ever... T- I know I told you this story. <laughs> uh, one of my uh, friends that I used to work with... Yeah. One day, Mm-mm. she was walking through the grove. <laughs> and then just drooled. <laughs> You just already made me spit up. Right. You did spit up. That's uh, why I'm laughing. I'm One day, my uh, this young lady was walking through the grocery store, mm-hmm. and apparently that day she was sans uh, panties. Love it. When her Benoit balls fell Stop. out of her snatch. Stop. <laughs> uh, I ting 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 down the down the aisle, hit the floor, you know, whatever. Yeah. And some little kid picked up, Lady, you drop these. Oh don't touch that. <laughs> oh my Dude, god. Go get some hand sanitizer. Chop your hands off right now. <laughs> oh, What's it. funny is when she told that story, I'm like, I don't know that that's a story. Oh, I would probably tell that story. Yeah. But I can't imagine Mm-mm. you got something inserted in you. You might yeah. want to wear something to keep it there. <laughs> yeah. you know, especially Cle- if you lose. Clearly your kegels aren't working, baby girl. I know. Do some more exercises. I mean, do something. Uh, <laughs> you're not supposed to be... <laughs> the children aren't supposed to know about that yet. No. Well, I was like, um, yeah, those are my cat toys. Oh my god, so sorry. <laughs> They're ball bearings. I'll just carry with me. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, it's break time, bitch. Take that um, break. You know, I'm gonna try. I was trying something new today. Not breaking. Not not breaking. <laughs> no, because that would. No, I've noticed that as I listen to the pod. Yeah. That the the time where they break in over the top of us talking. Yeah. Because in case you've missed it, I have tried to put the commercials into the places where we do the breaks, but it doesn't let me. They're supposed to whatever. That's what I pay them for. It's reverse racism. It is reverse. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm Mm -hmm. sure that they hate me. Well, Uh, but I've noticed that every time the commercial breaks in, it's like at 32 minutes. Okay. It's usually 32 and some ridiculous like and five seconds or something. So I figured I would wait until 32, take our first break, love it, and see if that actually works. Now, what I think what will happen (laughs) is we will. Do our little break, leave enough space for them to break in with commercials. And then right And then as back. soon as we come back, mm-hmm. it'll be, you know, and so I have this really important, now and blah, 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 some mm-hmm. ad will come you yeah, know, yapping over the top of us. Stupid. It is interesting to me, the ads that we get. Why? What's most interesting? <laughs> well, because like one day I was listening and we had an ad for some store in Florida. Mm-hmm. I'm all, Florida? But have you not listened to the podcast? Because I am not Florida. a fan of motherfucking Florida. No. You better not say Florida in a light manner <laughs> on my goddamn podcast. <laughs> Do you hear me? Flow rider. Flo- Ugh, God gross. Yeah. Um, okay, so since we're not going to break for another, oh, I guess. Just another minute. 50 seconds. <laughs> um, okay, but the topics that we are actually speaking about, um, you know. real topic today? Remember we were talking... Do you not remember? We had this conversation. Um, part of it was how the news divides us. Oh, yeah. And the other one was Mandela effects. Do you not remember this? I do. So are you new here? So You just want to talk heard... about butt plugs? <laughs> I do. I just want to talk about butt plugs <laughs> and things that fall out of you randomly in grocery stores. I think our podcast <laughs> is done for the day. <laughs> I think it might be done for good with this conversation. Um, oh, no. no, when I first heard of the... Mandela effect. Mm. I thought people were saying the man- mandala. Mm. And I'm like, so it's that cool, like, design. Yeah, There's, it is. And it's affecting things how? How is it affecting things? How does it affect me? Well, it doesn't. We'll find out when we, we come will. back. We might. Whew, what a break. Um, I know. I went and I did some laundry and fixed my hair and did my nails. Is and... this what your hair looks like fixed? Oh, <gasps> wow. <laughs> really, it's funny. I actually, my hair, I didn't even do my hair because I'm like, I'm just going to drop the kids off at school. Yeah. Come right back. And mm-hmm. then I was like, oh no, I have to mail a, a bill because one of the bills that I mail for my mother mm-hmm. every month, unfortunately, they don't have an online option which it's is 2022 stupid. i know it's the future who doesn't have an online option we're living in the future and so right across from the post office where i met is starbucks and that's when i said hey do you want coffee and then i looked in the mirror and i'm like oh girl uh, ooh, and so ooh. i threw a, a a bandana on mm-hmm. my head you're very and rosy the riveter today it bitch. doesn't look much better but at least it looks like i made some effort like i told you from the back door window i thought your hair was blue so uh, we're never going down that road again look my hair bitch, is blonde. i want you to no 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 my hair is not listen like 10 years ago your hair used to be blue constantly and it was stunting right it was like a deep navy and then you couldn't get it out of your hair and we just had this conversation earlier it just got Worse and worse and <laughs> different shades of swamp. And then you said, never again Well, I put blue in my hair. And then guess what? Months ago, you had fucking blue in your hair. So you're going to say never again. And then a couple years from now, bitch. Well, when I get uh, full on dementia and I can't remember shit, I will be like, ooh, this is pretty. I have never had blue hair before. What and is be this? Like, blue hair? Who ever heard of blue hair? Mm-hmm. Little old ladies. <laughs> Little old ladies have. All right. So which are we starting with? Um, I don't, I mean, it doesn't matter. I have notes for both because I come prepared. Um, oh, prepared. But look, I mean, I, guess, I have notes on the Mandela effect. Okay, so I have more notes on why, <clears throat> on um, the division of the news. Okay. So, well, so I'm going to explain what the Mandela effect cool. is for those of you yeah, who don't yeah. know. And the reason it's called that. So Nelson Mandela was in jail for about 30 years mm-hmm. for literally no reason mm-hmm. um, because apartheid. And... If you don't know what apartheid is, it's literally like Look it up. Jim Crow for South Africa. It's like segregation of South it Africa. It is segregation, and um, the white people in South Africa mm-hmm. were like, we have the divine right to be yep. here. No fucker, you're colonizers. Ooh, girl. She yeah. makes me irate. Anyway, anyway, 
So people remember that Nelson Mandela died in prison. In the 80s. In the 80s. Yes. And he did not. He mm-hmm. left prison and went on to become the president of South Africa. And then died in 2013. Right. Right. So he lived a long life after that. I mean, and he did a, and accomplished many, many things mm-hmm. post-prison. Yeah. For racial equality, for yeah. justice, for all those things. But yeah, people remember but him so, dying. So it started as people... When a large number of people, rem- mi- you know, Mis- misremember yeah. something, and it, but it's like as opposed to you just going, didn't you do this thing? Yeah. Well, you as a one person, that's not a big thing. Everybody does that. Yeah. But when it's a large group of people, right? And I think the the one to me that is the funniest, or the kind of like, wait, what? Is that Ed McMahon mm. never worked for Publishers Clearinghouse? Ooh, Games. girl, stresses me out because I. But it's like, I remember... Yes. I And, and there were always jokes about Ed McMahon mm-hmm. bringing you your big check and whatever. Yeah. He, he did work for another company. It was called American Family Publishers, where he would do the commercial going, you know, fill out your, do mm-hmm. your thing. But he never took out the checks. Weird, right? Right. And, but he also... But he never worked for... It. But people would say... Yep. You know, and it, there's even a reference to it on Golden Girls, where they're like, you know, Ed McMahon's going to come bring me my publisher's clearinghouse check. Yeah. And it's like, but he never, never did. did. But he, when he, uh, in his old age, yeah. did a commercial. And I want to say it was for one of those, like, uh, one of those cash, like, cash places. You okay. know, where you, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Where you, like, cat, payday loan kind okay, of Okay, yeah, yeah. But he made a whole big joke about it. He was in the car with a rapper, and they were rapping about bringing you your check, bringing you your money, and whatever. Right. And it was like... So it kind of furthered yeah. that. Uh, How interesting. Yeah. Because I remember reading that and being like, wait a minute. <laughs> he wasn't? Because even as a young child, I remember that. I remember, at least I thought I remember it. The one to me, though, that is really weird, um, and like my generation remembers it, even though it never fucking happened. Um, so they're, you know, Sinbad the actor, comedian. Of course they do. And then, so everyone remembers that he was in a movie called Kazam or Shazam, something like that, where he was a genie. But right. here's the thing. There was a movie with Shaq, where Sha- yes. it was called Shazam or Kazam, and he was a genie. But Sinbad was in, like, the show called The Adventures of Sinbad. And so I think people conflate the two and make it oh. the same thing. But I was like, no, I remember live action Sinbad in this movie being, you know, whatever, a genie. And... Collectively, people my age and like around my age also remember it, but it never fucking happened. And it's in Sinbad's like, I was never in a movie like that. Like, y'all crazy. And but he actually is just gaslighting. I know. Guys. And I'm like, he's all, ha ha, right. I did it. Fuck you, young people. You, you stupid. stupid. Exactly. I don't care. What do you know? <clears throat> um, well, it's because there's a whole bunch. Like, people remember uh, in Snow White. That the evil queen says mirror, mirror mm-hmm. on the wall. And she does not. She says magic she mirror. She says magic mirror yes. on the wall. And people are like, wait, what? Well, yeah. And, cause, and so the, when I was looking, doing my research for this podcast, I was looking up like the most notable Mandela effects. And a lot of them have to do with the spelling or names of things. So yes. like peanut butter, it's Jif. It's not Jiffy. Right, because there's Jif. And Skippy. Exactly, but and I not think Jippy. People have thrown them together, and it's like Jiffy Peanut There is no right. Jiffy Peanut Butter. No. Um, Looney Tunes, because is it spelled T O O N S, or is it T U N E S? And it's T U. Yes, right? Random things like that. The Baron's Team Bears is one. Did Curious George have a tail or not? Right, the Baron's, because most people of my generation would say the Baron Steen Bears, and it's the Baron Stain. With an A, bears. right. Right. How like people s- swear mm-hmm. that it was spelled E-I, like um, they didn't know how to spell their own name. Right, exactly, right? Sex and the city, or sex in the city, right. Febreze, like all of these things. What is well, the- and one of the things, that's sex and the city, Yeah, I watched, uh, after it was completely over, I then right. binge watched the entire thing, the entire series and the movies. And it's explained in the in the uh, little synopsis of the show mm-hmm. that the city is one of the characters because it, New York is so important to the story. Yes. So sex and the city are both important to the stories of these four women. Okay. And the men who come and go in the Gross. stories. Um, and right. later, the women who... Because Samantha has a little thing with a woman at one point... I remember but that. But in the new one, the new spinoff show, or whatever you call it, reboot, or that is just called, <clears throat> and just like that, mm-hmm. uh, Miranda 
comes out mm, okay. as being... Um, is it just like that after? Yeah, this mm-hmm. is like, you know, 20 years later. Okay, okay, okay. Um, another one, too, uh, is like Star Wars. The whole Luke, I am your father. He doesn't right. say Luke at all. He just says, at some point, you just right, says, he your says, father. Because Luke says to him, you <clears throat> killed my father. And he said, I am your father. Yeah. Motherfucker. Hey, stupid. This is stupid. Exactly. Why are you so stupid? I am your father. Were you shocked because uh-huh. you have a black father? Were you father? new here? <laughs> Were you new here? <laughs> um, and by the way, don't mess with that princess because she your sister. I, bleh, I know. God. I, what is it with popular shows? Because like, sorry, this is a sidebar, but I'm watching House of Dragons, which is the a spinoff of Game of Thrones, right? It's like 200 years prior. It's like one of their lore, one of their mythological tales. So anyway. it's during my childhood. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it, it involves a family... If you don't know anything about the Game of Thrones world, the world of ice and fire, there's these a family, royal family called right. the Targaryens. They all about incest. They all about keeping it in the family and to like maintain purity sure. and bloodline and wealth and whatever. So that your children's eyes can be too close together. Right. So people are watching your fingers exactly and be, <laughs> I guess, quote unquote, pure. But it's gross to me. I don't get it. That it sounds... happens in the royal families, too. Girl, look at them. Anyway, um, so... That's why they all look alike. I mean... Uh, anyway. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of, like, gross incest. And people... There's, like, scenes that are pretty, like, grotesque to me. But people are like, oh my god, I think they're so hot. And I'm like, that's an uncle and a niece. Like, she's literally 15 and he's, like, fucking 40. And you're all like, oh my god, but their relationship. And I'm like, what the Gross. fuck is wrong with you? Gross. So then, like, Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia, maybe they didn't know it, but, like, <laughs> Sister Mary Margaret, um, uncomfortable. Well, they only thought about getting there. They didn't get together. So I you know, know the other Star Wars thing that is in there is uh, C-3PO. His leg. His leg, because mm-hmm. most people just... Remember him as being all gold from yep. head to toe, and from the kneecap down on one leg, he's silver. And I didn't know that until I, saw, I was like, "Oh, yeah, huh. crazy." And, right? and you know, I've hung out with C three PO because um, most of my friends are robots. Um, yeah, I know. I've met you <laughs> and your friends, um, <gasps> but like, you. I guess Oreos, Kit Kat, um, all of these have like the spelling. What we remember is wrong. Oh, um, it was the double stuff, right? Yeah, that was. Spelled incorrectly. Weird. Um, Number of states, too. People still say there's 51 or 52. Are one of those states like the state of confusion? (laughs) The state of depression. Do you think that's because people include, like... um, Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico as a state? Or... Maybe. I just think people are stupid. Well, I mean, as stupid as our idiot president who said he... uh, Former president who said he spoke to the president... Of Puerto Rico, and it's like, that's you, shithead. Mm-hmm. I don't want him. I can't talk about him right now. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> another one, oh, is, you know how people are like, oh, Smokey the Bear. His name is... Okay, his Smokey Yeah, bear. his name is Smokey Bear. Like, his last name is Bear, and his first name is Smokey. Right, I met him at a bear bar, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> I'm, he should be protecting forest fires. Well, he was taking a night off. He needed a break. It's so interesting to me. Anyway, Mandela effects are silly. Billy right. Graham, I don't know. Billy Graham. It says his death. Like uh, many people can't place when Billy Graham's funeral aired on TV. Because who cares? It didn't happen until 2018. <laughs> it happened in the who cares? Yeah, I know. Fuck that. I mean, one more religious zealot. Who cares? Who cares? But yeah, uh, so I think one of the ones that's more, that's kind of interesting, and I don't I don't know that it really fits there, but I suppose it does. Is when Sally Field won her second Oscar. Mm-hmm. People always think, and I know it's because it was played up on shows like Saturday Night Live, yeah. that she said, you like me, you really, really like me, and that's yeah. not at all what she said. Okay, I didn't what know What she said was, I can't deny the fact that you like me right now. You like me. Because, you know, they gave her two Oscars back to back. Yeah. And for a little girl who started out as the flying nun, I would say I'm, that's a pretty good deal. She's doing the most. But then when people on, of course, SNL were like, you like me, you really, really like and so it became... Kind of part of yeah the fabric of things where people go oh well that's what she said that's what she's I know and it, what's interesting to me is I was talking um, to some friends and to Astra and I said so why do we think Mandela effects happen and Astra said well it's because people's memory is unreliable that's why like witnesses are unreliable in court and that's why like Mandela effects happen but I'm like but why do we remember things collectively as like a generation or a grouping of people or whatever a, cin- a citizenry like why do we remember it and that's that's the question right like why do we have this memory of something that doesn't happen 
And a lot of people, conspiracy theorists, and I kind of love it. I don't know if I believe it. But a lot of people think, you know, all the times the world should have ended. Like when the Mayans said it was going to end oh, in 2022. Right. The, or the whole Mayan calendar. Or also like the every time they turn on the collider. You know what I'm talking about? The yeah. Halogen Collider. It makes like black holes. People always think like we've shifted timelines. Which is very complicated and confusing. <clears throat> but it would make sense for like the 2016 election. It would make sense for everything that happened after that. Um, where things just get progressively darker. And things are wrong. Like random things are wrong. Like the spelling of popular things or Sinbad wasn't in a genie movie you know so what I think you're saying is Sinbad was in that movie then mm. something went back and changed time what no what and... I'm saying is he maybe wasn't in the movie in our original reality but now the earth has allegedly you know um, died and we've all died multiple times we've just shifted reality so in this reality he didn't do it that makes me girl mind. I know tell me about it so conspiracy uh, theorists are fun because they're confusing well and I know that like with movie quotes yeah most people misquote yep. movies anyway mm -hmm. because they'll be like oh when so and so well that's not ex actually what they said Hannibal Lecter never I said know. hello or hello Cl Clarice hello, he said Clarice. good morning yeah that's all never yep. said her name nope anyway. he said a lot of other things that movie mm -hmm. so disturbing mm -hmm. Ugh. <laughs> that movie I know. that movie worked my last nerve when I saw that movie mm -hmm. uh, I went I made sure I saw this is when I could still see scary movies before I became a big baby uh, I went and saw that movie in the middle of the day with my then friend uh, Rhiannon mm. uh, God rest, God her, rest soul. her soul anyway but Sorry. when it got to the last segment of that movie, mm -hmm. with the intense you know, <clears throat> scene, I don't want to spoil it, it's only you know 30 years old, yeah. you haven't seen it yet. I was like freaking out and crying and like, oh my god, what's gonna happen? You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny to me. <laughs> it's such a good movie. It's so intense. Mm -hmm. That movie and the movie Seven. Ugh. Seven is so good. It is so good and it's so intense and it's yeah. so creepy. It's so is. fucking But it's creepy. so well done. Exactly. I know. That you get to the end and you're just like, I What's am... in the box? <laughs> you know what's in the box. I know. Exactly. Gwyneth Paltrow's head. Oh, oh no. I spoiled it. How dare you? Spoiled. It. spoiled. It is um, no spoilt. It's funny. There are a couple of movies. I know this is like not what we're talking about, but... Scary movies. We talk about what we want because tan hashtag tangents, tangents are our topics. topics. Um, I saw, I remember it was young, fourth grade, whatever Blair Witch Project was in theater. Okay. I went with my best friend Carissa and her oh, whole family. Charisma. And the theater was like oversold and it was in McMinnville, so okay. a small town. Um, big old town. Anyway, uh, but the theater was oversold and so people were like sitting in the aisles and like on the floor. That's illegal. I want you to yes, know. Yes, it is illegal. What if, what if there was a fire? We're all going to die. But I was sitting between, like, Carissa and, like, her older sister. And mind you, I'm, like, eight or nine. And mm -hmm. I was a delicate child. So I'm watching Blair Witch Project. And if you have ever seen it, it's, like, handy cam footage, right? There are parts, though, because it's all just so suspenseful, that I'm, like, pan like straight panicking. And, like, her sister's, like, rubbing my back as I'm, like, silently crying watching <laughs> this, like, handy, handy cam film. And you don't ever really see anything. It's no. just too scary and suspenseful. But it fucking I know, for me... me. I hated that movie. Oh my god, it scared It didn't even get me. interesting to me until the very, very, very end when they go into the house, mm -hmm. and then it ends. And I'm like, what? It just now, because it really, up until then, it's like a lot of snot and tears, yep. and people not knowing how to follow the river. Follow the fucking river. If you're trying to go one way, Girl. stay on the same side of the river, keep walking. Follow the river, you're going to well, get out. And so it's funny, though, is I became kind of obsessed with oh, it. Oh no, there's a pile of sticks! Listen, ah. bro, listen, you're from the country, you should know better. <laughs> um, but... I, right, I saw piles of sticks everywhere. I lived in the country. I was I like, mean, I was not like, oh, a witch has been here. Well, it's because we were, where we're from is boring. Um, oh, but I wow. became pretty obsessed with it because then they came out with like the second movie, which was cheesy and acted. It wasn't like handy cam film. But there was a goth girl in it that I was like, oh my God, that's my future. Oh my God. Um, that is so me. Right. I'm and then it's so be her. There was like a, a series of like YA novels that were like okay. the Blair Witch Chronicles and then comic books and all those things. And I was like so deeply like, oh my God, the Blair Witch. And then I found out that that lore isn't even real. That all of no. that was just made up for the film. And yeah. then, I was fucking mad. <laughs> I thought that was clever because I watched a uh, in quotations mm -hmm. documentary mm -hmm. about the the lore. Yeah, and I was like, this all happened however many years ago, and then these children went out looking, and they made it sound like what we were going to watch in the movie was found was footage. Their found footage. Yes, and so I was like, what? And I found out right before I went, and mm -hmm. I saw it on opening night. Yeah. 
I found out literally right before I went to see it that none of that was true. Mm-hmm. That it's just a movie that some kids made for like a buck and a quarter. <clears throat> and then it made a gajillion dollars. And it was like, what? And then I watched it and I'm like, where exactly is the plot? Right, right. And what's funny too is I remember that the act, the three main characters, three, four, whatever, all showed up to like a movie awards, you know, like mm-hmm. MTV movie awards or whatever. And I remember it was like shock and awe from everyone else in the You're news. You're dead. Yeah. How are you here? You're dead. Like so silly. You to disappeared me. in the woods and uh-huh. never came back. And the How Blair Witch, you? gotcha. I know. I was like, uh, oh, Ugh. but since we're now on to the topic apparently of terrifying movies, I remember. <laughs> And I know you remember this too, because you had decided when we were uh, renting movies at Blockbuster <laughs> that we should watch Paranormal Activity. Oh, girl. You remember that? Yeah. Remember that? <sighs> so I'm like, this is awfully late at night, you know, because still, I was before I was actually a mom, but I was solely momming. Yeah. I was like, it's kind of late to watch a scary movie. <laughs> yeah. And Miss Annika's all, who cares? I know. Let's watch this scary movie. And I'm by brave. the way, I'm brave. It doesn't even get interesting. Until about halfway through. And then all of a sudden, things happen where you're like, what is happening? Uh, oh, did you see that thing in the uh, background? Did you see that thing move? Mm-hmm. Or different things, right? Yeah. And so by the time you get to the end, it's fairly terrifying. Yeah. Especially for people who've actually been around real um, <laughs> ghostly adventures right. and happenings and oof, what have you. Oof, oof. Which is me and you. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> but then the movie's over. And T and I are like, well, we're going to bed. Good night. <laughs> and we go upstairs to our room. And Miss Annika's like, I'm turning on every light in the fucking <laughs> yeah. house. And the TV was on, like, the loop of the Golden Girls for the next 20 hours. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> My room was in the basement. And I know it's like our basement's, like, finished and fine. But I was like, you want... It's still in the basement. You want me what? To go where? And no, I remember sleeping on the couch, blinds closed, every light on. I listened to, (laughs) you know, my four old ladies. It was a good time. It was scary. And let me tell you, I'm still scared of films like that. Like, the paranormal, like, you know, again, first handy cam kind of film fucks me up. I'm not good with it. Because I'm a, I'm a paranoid person in general, so I'm always like, who's in my house? <laughs> who's here? Right, mm-hmm. right. My house isn't very big, and when Astro used to work nights, I would be like, I swear to God, I hear someone talking in my house. There's not. My brain is just like, ugh. I, Guess was, what? Uh, I was sharing with my children the other day that because I have tinnitus mm-hmm. pretty significantly in my right ear, uh, and then I wear a hearing aid to kind of just amplify sound, mm-hmm. I often hear things that aren't there. Oh. Because no. with the tinnitus, I, it's sound always in my ear. Right? Yeah. It's a ringing, but the sounds change. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes I think that I hear music mm. and I'll be like, what? but it always sounds like it's very distant. Okay. And what it is, <clears throat> is the amplification of whatever sounds going along with yeah. the ringing in my ear. Okay. Yeah. And so sometimes it sounds like music. And sometimes it sounds like voices. Sometimes, it, and so I will get up in the middle of the night to pee or whatever, and yeah. I go, "What am I hearing? Are my <laughs> children talking in their room? Uh, Is it you know whatever?" Yeah. And then I so I'll walk that direction and hear nothing. It's uh. like, oh, there's nothing happening. And so it's a little mm-hmm. disconcerting. Yeah. Although I have to share with you. Oh no. So behind us, I I'm in the apartments back there. Yeah. And I know you've heard the couple that fights all the time. Fucking fight screams. They have screaming. Yeah. We are. How, what, a block away from them? A block, yeah. Yeah. We can hear them fighting in their house. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's always like full throttle screaming at two o'clock this morning. Love that. Because uh, my bathroom window was open. I went in to go to the bathroom at two o'clock. And I hear this, why am I even here? Why am I here? Bitch, that's And I wanted to shout out the window. All of us want to yeah, know that. Shit. Then go away. <laughs> Bitch, get out. Yeah, girl. You know, honest. Yeah. good God, girl, get out. Yep. Because Molly. <laughs> Molly, you in danger, girl. Uh-huh. Get out. Right. Seriously. You know, but for you to be, why am I even here? Who the fuck knows? And who cares? We've heard you yelling and screaming and calling each other horrible names for years now. Mm-hmm. Get out. Go away. I know. I know. I hear them all the time, too. And my house is just slightly closer. And how things echo. Yeah. I'm just like, is someone outside my window yelling directly into my window? <laughs> Why am I here? I don't know. Get away from my I window. Know. Um, going back to hearing things, though. I know this is not Mandela effect, but it's my brain gaslighting me. Um, that's why I don't like it being too silent. Again, if I'm home alone and, like, there isn't background noise or music or something, I feel like I hear people. And have you ever watched... Um, like TikToks or a video of what people have, they've created them to make it 
uh, simulate like what it feels like to be schizophrenic. Where you oh, kind of hear, no. you hear like it's kind of out coming out of both speakers of your phone. It feels really like wonky. You feel kind of crazy. That's how it feels to me. And so then for a while, it's like, are you right. schizophrenic? No, but you know what's crazy is it runs in my family. Um, are you shocked? No, no, right. But I remember just recently, um, beginning of this year, sitting at my house, and I'm like, I can literally hear people speaking, but it doesn't sound like full fledged words. It just right. kind of sounds right. like Elvish or something. And I'm like, Elvis is dead. Well, maybe he's haunting my house. <laughs> but I remember telling my therapist, like, I feel fucking insane. Like, I feel like I'm losing my mind and I'm hallucinating. And she's like, well, you probably are having, like, auditory hallucinations. She's like, it's not that big a deal. Oh, okay. Is it not? Oh, hallucinating is, it not? is not, because I'm not, like, on any fun drug that would make no. me hallucinate. No. So why am I hallucinating? I know, but she was like, it's not, you, you're paranoid. And so your brain is, like, working over time. And I'm like, okay. How dare you? And, and you're not wrong. I was like, so are you gaslighting me now? So, like, is Alan just going to gaslight me? It's or is Suzanne Sugarbaker. Are you trying to give me the old gas stove treatment? <laughs> I not. <love that. laughs> I, you know, I wanted to, since we're now, God knows, talking about anything and everything. Whatever. Uh, or nothing. Nothing. You know, since this is the podcast where we talk about anything, everything, and nothing. And nothing. I want to share this story with you. Because, I, you know, I was... For a while at the beginning, ending the stories with Tales from the Drag Closet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I haven't for a while, but I just thought of this story just now. Okay. W- because we're talking about movies and different things. I'm ready. When the movie, uh, Priscilla, not Priscilla, mm-hmm. wrong, uh, Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Namar, yeah. came out, I went to see it at a theater full of queer people. Yeah. Which is how, by the way, that movie should be viewed. Right. That one and Priscilla. Yeah. But I, and I saw both of them literally in a screening where I knew almost everyone in the theater. I love that. And it was full of drag queens and just, you know, the queer community. One of my favorite moments of that movie is at the very, very, and it was that experience. Yeah. Because this is not my favorite moment of the movie. There are some good ones. Is at the end when they're all talking about how they're going to be better people and Chi Chi Rodriguez says, and I am going to try to find a foundation that is closer to my actual skin color. <laughs> yes. And half the theater goes, poison. Oh, poison water. Is yeah. There. Poison, who, by the way, if you live here in Portland, you know who Poison Waters yes. is. Uh, I've known Poison since she a child. But she's one of those girls that spends a lot of time outside in the summertime mm-hmm. and gets very tan, but doesn't change her foundation. Mm. So her face is one color, and her neck and her chest are much darker. And now, I think now probably she does, but yeah. I remember she would always be like, why is your face a whole different color? Yeah. And so that was funny that, that you know people called her out in the theater. Mm-hmm. I mean, funny for me, they weren't calling me out. Well, yeah, who cares? cares? Um, I, don't, I don't care. I think one of you know, talking about seeing a movie <clears throat> in a theater and having it being an experience because of the crowd that was there, when we went to see Diary of a Mad Black Woman at Lloyd Center. Oh, God, I love that. It was like us and like the black community of Portland. And I was yeah. like, this is the only way everyone watched this movie. No, I'm kidding. I think it's a fine movie. But it is a fine movie, it was... but it's one of those movies. It's okay. Yeah, it's, it's not by mm. any means great cinema, right? But the best part is that should be. By the way, I think that should be a topic one day: is movies and stuff that we love that are not not good cinema, not good. But they're fine. Uh, but yes, when we went to see Diary of a Mad Black Woman, mm-hmm. we were the only white people there. Yep, and I loved it because mm-hmm. folks were talking back to the screen. Yeah, like when the girl just something stupid, they're like, "That's right, girl, get out of there!" Or yep. whop his ass. What yep. are you doing? Exactly. You know, and I felt like it was the Rocky Horror Show. Right. You know. But modernized and for the black community. Yep, I love it. And it was like, I felt privileged to actually be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Because it was like, everybody there obviously was not like, oh, we probably should not do this Mm because they some white people. No, they didn't care. Yeah. And, but you know, it's like, I think had there been more white people in the audience, that might have changed. Yep. But... I, I loved it. It's one of my favorite... My husband would have hated it because exactly. he hates it when anybody talks to him. Let me tell you, <laughs> as much as I love your husband, when he's like, you want to watch a movie? I'm like, I do, but it'll take us a week to get through it because anytime someone moves or talks or leaves the room or thinks out loud, uh, you pause the movie and I can't... I don't have time for that, girl. I have no. a lot going on. <laughs> so It is frustrating because sometimes it's like, um, you know, I was talking when there was nothing happening. Or it's like, comment, like 
That's why I like watching movies where it can be like commentary, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. I well, because when you and I watch movies together, yes, girl. I was like, girl, what's she doing? Uh-huh. Why does she do that? Why is she wearing that? Exactly. She would not go out with him. Well, no. You know, whatever. Exactly. Whatever, you know? Uh-huh. But that is us. Right. So, yeah. we are those girls. I'm just... And I'm like, yeah, uh-huh. How about I'll watch the movie and then you watch it and a week later we'll talk about it when you're done with it. <laughs> It's a two-hour movie, so I predict that'll take you at least a week to watch. By Christmas, we might be able to talk about it. Right. And that's, you know. Right. But I get it, you know. Right. Well, anyway. and now we're done talking because we've gotten to the end of our hour. And we have. We didn't even get to what was going to be our other topic, but I think that one deserves a little more yeah. time. Maybe we won't spend 30 minutes talking about nothing prior. You're talking about important <laughs> Very important, like putting candy corn up your ass. And oh, well, and also like the drag <laughs> and like the queer lingo quiz. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so we're at the end, and we're going to be done for today. Mm-hmm. And if you would like to uh, send us a message, con- I can't talk. Call the police. Call oh, the no. police. If you yeah. want to do that, don't do that. How about you? Like you share, you comment, you subscribe on right. like all and the if podcasting you would like to apps. Comment, send us a message at. It would seem as though at d- gmail adult call. Yes. <laughs> um, but, you know, tell your friends, tell your family, tell um, your state representatives, tell your enemies, tell your dog. Just tell, tell your priest I- in confession. Yes, that you listen to us. Then maybe it'll just pique that priest's interest. Anyway, tell everyone you know to listen to us because why not? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's all. Next that's week it. we're going to talk about politics. No, we're talking about news. We're going to talk about the news and, like and the how news it's a shit show. It divides everyone and... So that's the intention of it, is to yeah. unite everyone. So get your pad and your paper and take some notes, bitch, because we're going to school you. Anyway, um, I don't know what's happening. She's ruining Christmas. I don't know. Well, that does seem like something I would do. I've met you. Anyway, bye. Bye. <laughs> it would seem as though...